Hi, and welcome to uh, Experts in Southern Nevada. I'm your host, Greg Adamore. Each week we try to bring you something fresh and exciting, and uh, today uh, I brought back Michael Lathagy, who is an expert in uh, economic analysis and uh, been a chairman of several boards, uh, well-published, been on a lot of TV programs. And I wanted to welcome you. Thank you for coming back again. Yeah, thanks, today, Greg. Michael. It's great to be back again. Yeah, I think welcome. And uh, you're also co-founder and one of the leaders of the uh, Real Estate Investment Club here in Las Correct. Vegas. Correct. And I guess we have another meeting coming up. I'm also a member. Mm -hmm. uh, April 26th? A April 24th. Uh, 24th. Yeah, the Las Vegas Investment Club. When I first moved here, a lot of my friends said, well, you're trying to raise a family in Las Vegas. Does it really have a community mm -hmm. uh, basis in Vegas? And I said, yeah, I'm going to be a part of making sure that it does. Yeah. So what we did is we founded a club. There's no membership fee to be involved. There's no expense. Mm -hmm. The first year we actually charged $400 a year. Mm -hmm. But what we decided to do was we worked through generous corporate sponsorship and the whole mandate of the club is community-based. When we think, see things that have to change mm -hmm. uh, within the uh, local Las Vegas community that we think are uh, in the interest of homeowners and, mm -hmm. and investors, we work towards those. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, another big uh, part of the club is education and content. We talk about what's going on in the world and the economy and the local Las Vegas real estate market mm -hmm. and how it applies to individuals on an individual basis and what they can do for themselves to either make money for themselves or stop themselves from losing money. And then uh, thirdly, um, in, over the last year, we've uh, focused a little bit as a club on specific investment strategies to make money for ourselves, such as tax liens and tax deeds. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Ted Thomas. I uh, yep. attended that with my son, a very brilliant guy. I guess he's one of the foremost speakers and uh, educators in the United States. Well, tax, his, yeah, yeah, tax liens and tax deeds, which is when people don't pay their overdue taxes, mm -hmm. what happened is the counties have to get their tax revenue to keep the schools and the, mm -hmm. and the highways and everything else. Sure. So what they do is they uh, slap on a tax lien. And then investors buy those tax liens generally at the overdue taxes and they get a fixed rate of interest anywhere between 8% and in Texas up to 50%. 50%. 50%. Mm. So these are a very, very conservative way to invest and it's secured uh, and backed up by the real estate. Mm. And it's something most people never hear about it because there's no brokers who get paid as a result of this. Sure. It's simply something that you already have to know about. So that's something that uh, we've, we've gotten involved in mm. and I've had a lot of success in the past with uh, mm. tax liens and tax deeds mm. and it's something that the Las Vegas Investment Club is looking a lot more at and getting much more involved so we're mm -hmm. we're very uh, bullish on that yeah and you know as a realtor for 35 years too we're we've kind of evolved and morphed into uh, investment counselor so I wanted to go and learn and uh, you know it's a great great club and uh, the educator there you know he mentioned that you know these are pretty much guaranteed by the municipal local government so if you pay a and, and people can get in for like two thousand mm -hmm. dollars back, the back liens might be eight hundred might be two thousand three thousand mm -hmm. and I guess the good news is if you're not going to get anywhere from eight to fifty percent returns great hedge on inflation and if somehow or another the people don't reinstate that delinquent lien you wind up owning the property free and clear yeah and you know one thing too is um, uh, because we're talking to a Christian audience, and I said this last time I was on, on your show, look, I, I completely agree that you are buying the overdue taxes on, with people mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of cases, sometimes where they can't afford to pay the tax at this time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a lot of other uh, reasons that go on. And then you might say, well, there might be a moral dilemma with a Christian audience. However, mm -hmm. uh, the, what I actually say is, look, there's been a number of times that mm -hmm. I bought overdue tax taxes mm -hmm. and the best thing that ever happened is I'm the one who owned those overdue taxes because I work with the people where they got to keep their homes oh, nice. so that's where you can feel very great about getting involved in the tax lien mm -hmm. and tax deed business mm -hmm. and you can very much still wear a Christian hat when you're doing it mm -hmm. I mean there's lots of ways mm -hmm. you can do business it's how you choose to do it with mm -hmm. morality or mm -hmm. without or somewhere in between yeah, and I guess it creates a win-win situation mm -hmm. because otherwise the state would take that property and they would have no recourse or no Well, no, what ownership. happens actually, uh, Greg, is uh, if the people don't uh, pay you back on your uh, when you bought the tax certificate, uh -huh. you're able to go through a foreclosure proceeding uh -huh. and you're able to actually, in the end, uh -huh. own, the, uh, own the property. Let me give you uh, an example of property that I bought uh -huh. in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
I um I went to the uh to the uh register's office or the clerk's office. I picked up a, a tax certificate that was three years, a little over three years overdue because after three years, you can turn it into a deed. Mm -hmm. The way you do it is you have to serve everyone who has an ownership interest. Mm -hmm. I went and talked and knocked on the door of the owner of the house mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, they didn't have any interest. They were far in debt. Wachovia Bank was bought, had bought another bank. I served both banks. Both banks thought the other bank had responded. And mm -hmm. at the end, neither bank responded. Responded. I called my agent. They went down to the courthouse after 60 days and picked up the deed. Mm -hmm. All in, I had about 10,000 into the property. The property was appraised at 120. I sold it just slightly over 100,000. Mm -hmm. It was a massive profit, and those are the mm -hmm. type of things that go on in tax liens and tax deeds. And that was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So knowledge is actually power. I mean, uh, having knowledge of these type of opportunities and. That's one of the great things about coming to the Investment Club and being a member myself. And I share these with our audience. Uh, it's always great news if people can uh, prosper and be blessed this way. And of course, then you could use the money for whatever God puts on your heart. You know, you can help homeless or help people or, or give them people a chance to own a home. You could do the owner financing because you're yep. basically inheriting a property or acquiring a property that would be free and clear. And you just have to take care of the maintenance and the taxes and uh, it should be insured. But uh, what a wonderful way to uh, help people get on their feet. And these tax liens are happening in every city in the United States. And right here in Clark County, you can con contact uh, yourself or someone at the Investment Club or myself and, uh, and get information. Go down to the assessor's office and, and bid on properties or buy these certificates. And they'll give, give you, what, 8% uh, on up. Well, there is over 3,000 counties in the United States. And every county has different rules. Yeah. and you could practically say laws and every state has different interest rates yeah. so you have to know every county you you focus on a few mm -hmm. but um, there are better places in my opinion mm -hmm. in the United States where you'll find better counties uh, where you can do better and there's less competition and there's little strategies we learn mm -hmm. and we use to do extremely well but uh, definitely if you want to learn more about the uh, um, tax lien and tax deed strategy. Uh, besides our next club meeting on April 24th, on May 1st also uh, we're going to be having an evening, a tax lien and tax deed evening where we're going to be teaching about tax liens and tax deeds and bringing the membership up to date. Mm -hmm. And on April 24th and May 1st, both our club meetings are at the Orleans Hotel and as you know we always start right on time, 6.59 p.m. Okay. We always respect people who come early and we never start late so that we reward the people who are there in their seats and the room is always jam-packed mm -hmm. at 659 they're all sitting they're all ready to go mm -hmm. and we put out 250 seats and they're always full yeah, it's and then we don't allow any more than that and unfortunately we have to turn people away at the door so we mm -hmm. are going to bigger rooms now so the club keeps growing yeah, and it's, a, it's free to, to attend. Right? It's free to attend, yes. Which is wonderful. Corporate sponsorship, that's yeah. why. Yeah, we had Steve Hawks on the show recently, and he's also going to speak at this next meeting. He's an, he's an authority on the, on the mar real estate market as well, and he's one of the uh, founders, I believe, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah. Steve uh, Hawks is, a, uh, is one of the founders of the Las Vegas mm -hmm. Investment Club. Mm -hmm. Richard Lee, who's been on your show in the past, who's yeah. an expert in commercial real estate, uh -huh. and I always call him the unofficial mayor of Las Vegas because okay. he is so revered. People love Richard. Yeah. And Steve's the same way. He, he's the up-and-coming unofficial mayor. I yeah, mean, yeah. <laughs> you talk about just a fantastic guy who's, who's got a lot of time for people, and he... You know, he, he, you know, Dale Carnegie uh, type of personality, just a great guy. Yeah, he really is. He's got some great programs out there. For very, people. Both of them are very intelligent. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, just before we start moving into some of the uh, questions and answers, uh, a little bit more about your background. I know that, you know, you were chairman of uh, several companies that grew worldwide. Yeah. And, uh, well, um, I um, previously I had uh, I had built a, a company and uh, and an investment club, and it grew to over a hundred million dollars mm -hmm. under management. It was the largest investment club in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, I was chairman of the board of One Eight Hundred Got Junk, and that started out mm -hmm. as just mm -hmm. one uh, little rubbish removal company in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and it's now the world's largest. They were on Oprah a few mm -hmm. years ago as well. They, uh, they're in several countries mm -hmm. all over the world and just become a very, very large company. I'm sure the majority of your uh, viewers have heard of that company. I've sat on mm -hmm. several public boards. Uh, one of the really exciting things was uh, in uh, 2007, 
uh, to thousands of companies. Um, I was uh, nominated uh, uh, as a finalist, the CEO of the year, down to the final four. So that was a, a real, uh, mm. a real something that uh, I was proud of. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, yeah, I, um, I've noticed that in the right place, right time, with the right advice, you know, collaborate with the right people. There's so many wonderful things happening, and uh, I just put a little plug out there for. Uh, a website uh, development there's called buy sell make offer and some con mm -hmm. people contacted me um, you know about a show they saw on the TV here and uh, they're apparently going to be the next Craigslist type of uh, hmm. property and they're, they're growing out of California and they put like 20 of my listings on uh, virtual tours all over their uh, website and uh, they're growing and they're just a small outfit right now but if you look on the uh, internet what's the next best uh, alternative to Craigslist it says like there's like 360 million hits. There's people that have, uh, you know, gotten mm -hmm. behind this company. So, you know, the type of things that when you see companies start where they start and you get startup capital and you get people behind them and you've got the right cause and the right principles and uh, mm -hmm. the ethics involved with any type of uh, uh, opportunity, it's, it's just amazing what uh, the good Lord can do if he wants to, mm -hmm. you know, find favor with the people and their, and their efforts and their causes. And, mm -hmm. uh, I know. Um, uh, the market's kind of been kind of up and down. We've kind of roller coaster this year, and I think before we started rolling today, you mentioned the stock market got kind of kind of roughed up a little bit today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, the um, you know last time I was here, I spent uh, the entire time talking about my economic outlook, what was going on in the economy, and what investors should do. Mm -hmm. And I really believe since. The time we spoke and right now I've nailed it exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just kind of uh, give a, uh, a quick uh, recap of the last time. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the government had stated that uh, unemployment rate had dropped from 11, just over 7%. Mm -hmm. And I'd said, look, that, that isn't true. Mm -hmm. um, what you have is a, a labor pool uh, where 63% of people in 2008 had a job. Right now only 59% of uh, able working Americans have a job. So you've actually dropped the 4%. Mm -hmm. The reason why the unemployment numbers are dropping is simply because um, when a person is on unemployment for a length of time and then they're off unemployment, they're no longer can, can counted as a statistic. Mm -hmm. And we're having 5 million people drop off the statistic chart this year. So the big challenge that we actually have is, is employment numbers have not gone up. Mm -hmm. We have over 100 million people in the United States who receive some form of government check every single month. Mm -hmm. And what I really talked about at the last time I was here is I said, look, the reason why the stock market has gone up so much is because mm -hmm. of the Fed's buying down 10 and 30 year treasury notes. Mm -hmm. And the way they've been doing it is by artificially creating money and then they use that money at the treasury mm -hmm. auctions mm -hmm. and when the bonds come up for sale, what they essentially do is they they bid on the bonds. Say a, a, a 30 year treasury note comes up at, at a point and a half, 1.5%. Well, if there's no bidders, the the Fed bid takes their money that they've created to bid on that treasury note because if they don't bid on it, it might go to what, 1.75, 2%, two and a quarter, two and a half. So they bid on it to artificially keep rates low. Now, one thing that I said to your viewers that it caused me a great deal of concern is the money supply has increased 8% in the last 12 months. Now, 8% increase in money supply is a massive amount, and let me tell everyone why. Um, inflation is defined as more money supply chasing the same amount of goods and services. Mm -hmm. So I would argue that is the definition that no one argues with. Mm -hmm. Therefore, inflation is truly at 8%. Mm -hmm. And if you are have your money in the bank and you're only getting one or two points mm -hmm. or less wow. on your money, you're actually losing enormous purchasing power every single year of your uh, of your cash. And what's happened with all this money is the extremely rich have done ex have done well because um, the S and P 500 has over two trillion dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. What the S and P 500, which is 500 of the largest companies in America, mm -hmm. what they did is they didn't use their own money. They went and borrowed money where they collateralized their own money that they had in the bank, mm -hmm. and they used that money to basically buy back their own shares and retire, retire them from treasury. So what does that do? 
it causes a much smaller pool of shares available for sale mm. and prices get driven up. Who's benefited from the stock market run? The ultra rich. Mm. The middle class still can't go out mm. and for the most part get loans at the bank and mm. the people who get the loans at the bank or have been borrowing the money are the extremely wealthy and what mm. are they doing? They're fully margining into the stock market at levels that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And that's what's driving up the stock market to levels, unprecedented levels. And what mm -hmm. I said to you mm -hmm. is this party is going to end in the first six months of the year, slowly start getting out of the stock market. Today mm -hmm. is April 10th, mm -hmm. 2014. What have we seen today? We've seen the biggest sell-off on the NASDAQ in a long period of time, in two years as a matter of fact. And what are they selling off? They're selling off Facebook, social media stock, biotech stocks. Why is that happening? Because people are becoming very concerned about the valuations. These companies, for the most part, are trading at enormous multiples of the amount of earnings that they have. And the NASDAQ is trading at about 36 times earnings, where the S&P is only trading at about 16 or 17 times earnings. So what you have is a market, especially the NASDAQ, that is grossly overvalued. And we're seeing these stocks get hit. And what did I say? When quantitative easing stops, when the Fed stopped printing all of this money, Mm -hmm. and they start tapering down. They've already tapered from 85, 75, 65, and as they keep going down mm -hmm. to 55, 45, and eventually down to zero, mm -hmm. what we're going to see is interest rates are going to spike up absolutely 100%. Mm -hmm. As interest rates spike up, we're going to see money leave the stock market and it's going to go to a place of less risk. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see a great, great correction in the stock market. So I told everyone last time I was here, I said, look, you can keep your money, but slowly start getting it out between now and June. I was here, I think, around January. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we? We're at April. We're starting to see this correction take place. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the Feds can continue to play games for a while longer. There are type of policies that they can create mm -hmm. to keep this party going in the mm -hmm. stock market. However, eventually it's going to end, and it's going to end extremely ugly, and it's going to be a much worse consequence mm -hmm. than we saw in 2008 mm -hmm. and that's you know when quantitative easing one ended mm -hmm. the market had a correction when quantitative two mm -hmm. ended the market had even a bigger correction this is where the fed artificially creates mm -hmm. money number three quantitative of three mm -hmm. is extreme compared to one or two mm -hmm. so as much as you've seen a party on the upside mm -hmm. you are going to see a downward correction on the on the downside mm -hmm. and this is the type of stuff that we talk about at the club meetings mm -hmm. and uh, actually i will say if anyone has a question about their individual uh, portfolios or any of your viewers want to ask me in, uh, a specific question about the economy, mm -hmm. um, they could actually send it to the club. I'll make sure I uh, answer it for them. Mm -hmm. Events mm -hmm. at lvinvestmentclub.com. They email you. Or yeah. Uh, yeah. So it'd be like events at lvinvestmentclub.com. Right on the bottom of our uh, teleprint. Okay. And, uh, so I guess this is why investors will never really outperform the market with what's going on. Well, <laughs> Investors don't outperform the market because investors are reliant upon the system and financial advisors. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a great example. Um, if, if you were to invest $10,000 into the stock market, the stock market over the last 50 years has done an average return of 11% per year in the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. But if we took a number of just 10%, if you invested $10,000 over 50 years, you'd end up with $1,170,000. However, mm -hmm. the financial services industry charges you a small fee, and that fee, about 2% a year. So mm -hmm. you might say, well, on 10,000, that's only 200. Mm -hmm. However, what happens over a period of 50 years is because of that management fee, you will only end up with 470,000 as opposed to 1.17 million. That's a difference of over $700,000 on your return. That's the damage of managed money. Mm -hmm. Now, the other part that I'm going to tell all your, uh, all your viewers out there is a lot of you might be happy because you've invested in the stock market and you're doing well. But I'm also going to tell you 90% of you have underperformed the stock market. If the stock market has gone up, 
16 points in the last trailing 12 months, you're only doing 14 or 13. You may say that's not a big deal, but I've just given you an example of why it's a big deal. And on the flip side, if the market's in a downward trend and it goes down 8%, you're likely down 10 or 11. That's the damage to manage money. That's why the club is much more about empowerment, mm. coming out, working within the club mm. where there's not management fees. That's mm. why we do it. Okay. And uh, you're saying that basically financial advisors are not really giving the right advice when they're telling us to diversify. Can you comment on that? Well, yeah, what happens um, a lot of times is, le let me kind of make a funny story. Um, you, uh, you have a financial advisor and your financial advisor's name is Sally. Okay. okay. Right. You call Sally and you tell her you've just inherited $100,000 and she's more excited than you are. Mm -hmm. And the first words that are going to come out of her mouth is, we have to spread the risk. We have to diversify. Yes. And that's what they all say. Diversification is just a strategy mm -hmm. for making money for the financial services industry. Mm -hmm. It's misused. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, you'll believe Warren Buffett. Uh, Warren Buffett basically says diversification is for those people who have absolutely no idea what they're doing when they invest. Yeah. All right, here's the proper definition of diversification. Um, in 2004, I, I did a study and I looked at what was going on in worldwide supply of uh, uranium. Mm -hmm. I saw that there were 68,000 pounds of worldwide supply mm -hmm. and 95,000 pounds of worldwide demand. I'd also seen from 1973 to at that point 2005, the price of uranium had dropped from $43.10 a pound down to slightly over $7 a pound. All the uranium mines, about 80% of them worldwide had closed down because they couldn't be profitable to keep the mine open. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at that supply and demand imbalance, I said at that point, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up a number of stocks. Mm -hmm. I actually did it live on t on when I was filmed on uh, on uh, in front of the cameras. Mm -hmm. What I did is I took a million dollars, I took a hundred thousand dollars on each stock and I bought 10 stocks. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what happened. A year later, those 10 stocks were worth $3.5 million on the million that had gone in. And uranium at that point was only under $40 a pound. Now it started at seven. Mm -hmm. So what happened in the ensuing year and a half is uranium shot up to well over $100 a pound mm -hmm. and that 3.5 million kept going up. But what I'm trying to make as a point is this, is Diversification only makes sense when you're within a focused strategy. Mm -hmm. Now what I did is I looked at uranium. I didn't want to put all my money into one stock. I diversified over several stocks. Mm -hmm. Now that's the proper use of diversification, mm -hmm. not what the financial services industry will teach you. Mm -hmm. Put $25,000 of the 100 into a high tech fund, 25 mm -hmm. into a real estate investment trust, mm -hmm. 25 into a biotech fund, and 25 into commodities fund. Mm -hmm. At the end, two go up, two go down, they charge you a management fee, mm -hmm. and you basically underperform the, the market by uh, the management fee. Yeah. So that's the proper definition of management mm -hmm. versus um, the uh, what the financial services industry tries to do, uh -huh. which is not in the best interest of investors. Yeah, and with the 8% equation we talked about earlier, even if you were lucky enough to break even, it's like playing uh, five or 10 different numbers on a roulette wheel, you're gonna lose uh, you know, eight out of 10 because only one number is probably gonna hit. Yeah. You know, so, uh, well, it was interesting on those uranium stocks, uh -huh. every single one of them, because uranium, you remember, went from $7 to up $100 a pound. Uh -huh. Things like Dennis and Mind, I got involved at under a dollar and the stock went up to nearly twenty dollars, and that's just one of several. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you had mentioned to uh, share with our viewers the uh, Harry the chimpanzee story. Or yeah, that, yeah. Well, <laughs> what there and this really this really hits home because it uh, it it explains just the abuse that goes on within the financial services industry, and I really want your viewership to understand this. Between 1980 and 1985, there was a chimpanzee by the name of Harry. What Harry had is he had 500 of America's largest companies called the S&P 500, mm -hmm. and there were 500 stickers. And what Harry did is he went up and he picked a sticker, he went up to the S&P 500 and he put a sticker on one of those companies. Went back, picked up another sticker, went back to the wall, picked another company. Harry did that 
30 times for five years. Mm. At the end of it, Harry performed, Oak performed mm. over 90% of the active managers, money managers in the United States. Mm. The main reason, Harry doesn't have a management fee. Mm. There you go. Okay, but yeah. what really hits home is just the fact that, you know, it's people who give their money out to financial advisors to manage for them. Mm -hmm. Blindly sometimes. Mm -hmm. Are simply going to underperform the market. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, it, unfortunately, in the end, the mm -hmm. 401ks and the IRAs and that mm -hmm. everyone tends to do in America, mm -hmm. it's a long, slow road to the poor house. And no one is going to deliver this type of message. As a matter of fact, I wrote a, and a, you know, I wrote a 400 page mm -hmm. manifesto about the abuses of the financial services industry. So mm -hmm. this is something I certainly go on for hours yeah. about. Yeah. And it was basically, uh, in closing, and we have a few minutes left. Uh, where's your outlook on the economy now today? I mean, we've touched on a little bit with yeah. what's happening with the government. But, uh, well, the, the main, the most important thing that I really want to hit home, um, Greg, is the fact that the feds are going to continue to try to keep this party going as long as possible by artificially creating money and buying down long-term treasury notes. Mm -hmm. The minute interest rates start to go up, it's going to be a bloodbath. And we're, my, the most extreme example, and this is unlikely to happen, but the mm -hmm. most extreme example is interest rates go up so fast that the derivatives market, many of the bets in the derivatives market go bad what you're going to see is companies like Goldman Sachs that are leveraged 60 to 1 on derivatives mm -hmm. trades mm -hmm. are going to collapse. And the too big to bank fail, too big to fail banks mm -hmm. will fail because the feds can't bail them out. Mm -hmm. Now that's unlikely to happen, but I have to tell your viewers it's something that could happen. Yeah. Um, but the feds are going to continue to play this game of keeping interest rates low, mm -hmm. but eventually they have to stop printing money. Mm -hmm. And if interest rates go up really, really high, mm -hmm. there's it, at it, at 7%, 75% of all revenue dollars, I, mm -hmm. IRS dollars, mm -hmm. go towards paying the debt. Mm -hmm. At 10%, 100% goes towards paying the debt. So what does that tell you? There's no, right. no money for schools, infrastructure, mm -hmm. highways, police, mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. And this is why I'm so concerned. So mm -hmm. in the end, the police are the, uh, uh, it all depends on Fed policy, sure. but this party is going to end mm. very, very nasty. Mm. The only thing I will say that's helping us mm. is the carry trade. Mm. Um, as interest rates go lower in other countries, money is repatriating mm. back to the United States. Mm. Uh, that's helping us a bit, but I'm mm. telling you, mm. we are going to have a recession that is going to pay, make 2008 mm look like just something as a we'll mild recession. Look up our seatbelts viewers and get in touch. Come to our investment group meetings and uh, contact Michael and myself. And uh, Oh, congratulations, you're becoming a citizen tomorrow? Oh yeah, I, uh, I'm becoming a citizen uh, tomorrow. One thing I want to, can I say one thing on that? Yeah, we only have about a minute left. Okay. Um, you know, one thing they, they talk about is defending the Constitution. I completely agree on that. One thing I want to say is yeah. the United States is about individual rights and freedoms. You come, you work hard, and you get ahead, and I believe in that. Okay. Unfortunately, what's coming to America is, is a country of lobbyists and a country of entitlements where you have over 100 million people yeah. who are getting a checks on a monthly basis. So I have concerns about that, but yes, very proud to become an American citizen. Oh, thanks. thanks for coming today, Michael Lethegy. Yeah. And uh, see you next Tuesday, 5 o'clock.